huge. Yeah. That needs to be something that is focused on. Because if you don't focus on that in the beginning, you're never going to have a good flowing job. You're going to have fights on the job. Yep. You're going to have guys yelling and screaming at each other. You're going to have guys that just say, screw it, I'm going to get to it when I get to it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have all of that because you haven't created a team atmosphere on that project. And all you're going to do is end up with a bunch of hassles. Right, <laughs> right. So that's like what you were saying, though, is you know having the full package, being able to communicate with people. Yeah. And not be the hard ass and be under pressure and, and not uh, uh, communication. Yeah, be able to shoulder the, the stress of the job. Yeah. You know, your stress, your stress falls way off if you understand how the job's actually supposed to get built mm -hmm. from yeah. start to finish. Exactly. And a lot of guys get stressed out because they're not seeing the total picture, the total job from start to finish. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're an apprentice mm -hmm. and they've got you doing something, you should be thinking about what you're doing from start to finish. What am I doing today from start to finish? If you're a first period apprentice, mm -hmm. what is my whole day look like? Do I need a 10 foot ladder to get into that room to do that? Do I need a Perry scaffold? You should be thinking of all of those things. You know, you should be asking your journeyman, what am I doing next? Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't be, uh, just standing there looking up at him while his back's turned to you and not doing anything. <clears throat> you should be moving. If you're not moving in a, in a fashion that is putting stuff together, you're moving in the wrong direction. Yep. Whatever you're doing should mm -hmm. be putting stuff together because that's what they pay us to do. Exactly. They pay us to build. Mm -hmm. um, and that needs to be a flow. And the better you can make that flow, the better everything moves. You know, some people need to be taught how to work. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They're they, not pushing a broom for mommy and daddy on the weekends uh, mowing the lawn. Right. You yeah. know, they, they just don't. Uh, you you kind of had it in your blood already. You yeah. know, about that. You were around <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't really know, have much of a choice. As a kid, you know, yeah. and you were, um, you, you were, you had little side jobs and stuff. I'm sure you cut lawns for people yep. and you were working for your dad on the weekends or summer vacations or even uh, winter vacation, you yep. know, around Christmas, he may bring you to out to a job or something, scrap this out or whatever. So you kind of had it in your blood already, but yep. not, not everybody does. And, you know, that's another thing that they're doing for these, this recruiting new talent in the yep. union is they're vetting these guys. So I hear they have a program over there at the training center where they bring these new people in. Yeah, these newbies in. Yeah, and they're uh, they're kind of making them hump it, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, to see. This is what you're going to be doing every day, guys. Who's good, who yeah. who can make it, who can't. We we never had that, no. you know, when, when we were coming up. No, know? but when we got in the trade, you either figured it out or you just quit. Exactly. I, I mean, when I first got in the trade, I can remember tons of guys just quitting. Sure. Because, it, you know, handfuls of screws thrown at you if you weren't moving fast enough was normal. Yep. I, I mean, it just was. Just part of the gig, yeah. And nowadays, I'm going to be probably firing a guy if he's doing that to somebody. Um, just because of the way that the laws are nowadays, we can't sure. be doing that stuff. Right. But at the same time, there's a reason union guys make a lot more money. Exactly. We need to outproduce mm -hmm. our non-union competitors. Sure. Three to one. Yeah. If uh we're not making three to one to them the companies that we work for will mm -hmm. fail Yep, and the union will fail. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's more important to me because those guys that are coming in behind me, those first period apprentices now are going to be the journeymen in the future when I'm collecting my pension. Exactly. And if that first period apprentice that's just starting out right now, if I don't as a journeyman or a foreman or a superintendent, if I'm not taking care of that kid, and bringing him up and teaching him how to become a great carpenter, I'm doing myself a disservice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As well as him. <laughs> sure. It, <laughs> you know? It's like you're raising a child, you know, yeah, I mean, in, in a sense. Yeah, in a sense you are, you know. You know? And, the, and at the same time, you're taking care of yourself. If you don't understand it that way, you're not seeing the bigger picture. Right. You, you're, just, you're just showing up to work mm -hmm. that day. Maybe you're not thinking about that but it should be something that's in the back of your head all the time yeah you need to be educating those kids and bringing them dude, up dude you sound like an owner 
<laughs> I mean, you're running your you're running your gig like you own the company. Well, I mean, the company takes care of me. I take care of them. That's yeah. The, you know, there's probably a fancy word for that, but I'm just a dirty, rotten, stinking carpenter, <laughs> so I'm not gonna be able to pull that na- that that word out of my head. But uh, it, you know, the reality of it is, we work synonymously together. Sure. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what makes it work. <laughs> exactly. It's it's pretty simple. Seems to be work. It's been working for me for 30 years, so yeah. I'm not going to change it's anything. 30 year overnight success, man. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I like yeah. to say it's the longest summer job I ever had. There you go. Just for good fun. There you I, go. You know. So how many uh, kids do you have? I got two, two girls. Two girls. Didn't get the stem on the apple, but uh both my grandsons. Mm-hmm. I got one in the one grandson is uh he turned a year in March. Stems on that apple, so I got, and then the new one's in the oven. Uh, so I got, uh, I got two boys coming, two boys. Two Congrats. Boy grandsons coming. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's so much fun. I didn't realize I was going to enjoy being a grandpa that much. It, it's kind of weird. It, yeah. It, you know, it, well, it's, it, it's a different, uh, I'm not, but no. I can, you know, you can, you can spoil them and give them back. Yeah. Well, there's, a, uh, there's obviously that. And anybody who knows me, knows that uh, I control my obnoxious behavior constantly because I love pulling pranks on people. So my girls deal with me pranking on them constantly. Mm -hmm. And uh, now this just gives me another level in which to do that. Sure. I can fill them full of sugar and then send them home. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) uh, Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. That's awesome. Hey, so Ron, Ron was telling me that you're, uh, an avid stand-up paddle surfer. Uh, I don't really do too much paddle surfing as much as I paddle board. Okay. I, I, I like uh, I like going over to uh, Long Beach because it's close to my house, and I, I paddle around the island a few times just for. That's my form of exercise and relaxation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's just a good. I love being on the water. I I've wakeboarded for gosh since the early '90s, so uh, you know I've been. Uh, been surfing most of my life so yeah it's just what i enjoy to do got Get it on the water i enjoy the water yeah good for you so when you when you're catching waves where do you go uh usually in huntington someplace uh, huntington's yeah. close to my house i live in westminster so you know it's huntington and mm-hmm. bolsa chica those are all those areas that are just close sure it's easy my it. i don't get the i usually don't have the time to make a drive to go do that stuff anymore yeah no no safaris huh yeah just stay close to home well it's it's surf city bro yeah you know it's all good it's all good i do a lot more paddleboarding than anything anymore i I came off on a dirt bike uh this last thanksgiving and i'm just about healed up and Mm. uh yeah my wife's my wife's pretty much done with that with that dirt bike yeah (laughs) Uh, are you no see that's the hard part for me still want to get on that throttle huh oh yeah i don't care you know, anytime you throw your leg over a bike, it doesn't matter if it's a bicycle or a dirt bike. That's right, There's man. There's a chance of coming off. That's yeah. just reality. Yeah. Well, you like that power band, huh? Oh, yeah. Lay into that throttle. Yeah. Uh, and the bike I own is an XR650R. So mm. if you don't know the bike, you don't understand. But it's uh, it was the fastest desert bike for a long time. Mm-hmm. Still probably is for most people. But Yeah, uh, and you would still flap like a flag on that thing if you had it wide open. Oh, yeah. Those are powerful. That bike's, well, it's geared, right now it's geared for right at 100 miles an hour. So 100 mile an hour dirt bike is a fast bike. Very, very fast. Yeah. Yeah. So where, when you paddleboard, you go in the uh, harbor over there? Yeah, I like paddle around Long Beach Harbor. It's just an easy shot because they got a nice little place you can, you can, you know, you can even hose off your board and everything and mm-hmm. make sure you're not dripping salt water all over the top of your truck when you, sure. you know, paddle boards are, mine's 12 feet long and. It oh, doesn't wow. just fit in the bed of your truck. No, no, that's a monster. <laughs> that's like a touring board or yeah. something. Yeah, Win-win. in fact, I I built a uh, custom rack for the back of my truck just for it. So Got yeah. it. Yeah, Ron Ron was talking like you were uh, avid on um, catching waves on a stand-up. No, no. That, Ron, Ron wishes I'd get out and surf more, but yeah. to me, for the most part, uh, it's paddleboarding. Got it. You know. Got it, got it. You know, it, it, usually I, it's, I'm old, I'm an old fart now, man. 50, 50 minutes or an hour is about all I'm going to get for a workout. 
Yeah. I, I still tease the kids, you know, I, you know, I make them do push-ups now and again when they, when they drop the ball on the job site. But, uh, when somebody drops the ball for me and I make them do push-ups, I do my push-ups with them. Oh, because that's a team building experience for sure. Cause we're a team. Yeah. And when one drops the ball, we all drop the ball. Okay. Yeah, all right. That's, uh, that's just something I like to do. Yeah. Cause I think it's a good team building experience, you know? And then it's kind of fun cause you realize these young kids, some of them can't even keep up with a 50 year old man. Mm. And that's like, come on, man. I'm yeah. a 50 year old guy. Yeah. You're 30. Exactly. It's 10 push ups. Get on it. <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> dude. That's funny. That's actually yeah. pretty, that's cool because, uh, you're, we have a physical job. If you can't, if you're not physically fit or stay physically fit, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna wear you out for sure. It's but gonna tear you, you know, you, you can see old guys out there and this happens all the time. They don't, they look like they're moving slow, but they put, oh. they put up a lot of shit in a day more yeah. than, oh yeah. A lot of young guys. Oh yeah. They just I, know the tricks. I can remember one and you might remember this guy too. Uh, Steve Aguirre. You ever remember Steve Aguirre? No, never worked with him. Yeah. Steve Aguirre probably one of the funniest carpenters I've ever worked for. Um, but he could make the fastest guy on the crew look slow. And he was always 10, 15 years older. Is that was, right? It, I remember we couldn't hit when we were doing Hogue hospital, we couldn't hit our, couldn't hit our production rates for, um, notched backing. 16 gauge not backing everywhere, obviously in a hospital. And we were, we were losing, <laughs> we were losing big. And we, you know, no matter what we did, we were switching guys out. See if you can do it. See if you, can do it. nobody could get the, get to the budget. Mm -hmm. You know, we just couldn't make it. And, uh, I said, Steve, you want to, you want to do that for a little while? And, uh, he goes, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll see what I said. You got to beat that apprentice over there. Cause he's our fastest. You know. <laughs> And the first day, I think Steve had like eight more sticks on the wall than the kid did. And then the next day, he had like 12 more sticks on the wall. And every day, he was a few more. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you kind of look at him and go, if this old man can do it, how come you can't do it? You yeah. Know, well, Pay attention to what the old man is doing Yeah. because he's got it figured out. Mm -hmm. First couple of days were a little slow for him. But after that, he was crushing it yeah. because he, he doesn't make any wasted moves. Ex he's lean he's lean <laughs> you know they yep. there's there's been um there's been guys in here that you know a lot of these companies are implementing those programs but a lot of these guys were piecers yeah that's always been lean it's always been lean right because well, if you ain't putting it up you will be lean yeah yes okay? and and that's how you that's how you get productive when you get paid by the piece that you put up exactly you'll you'll figure it out and that's where that's where union carpenters have to be all the time sure if you don't if you just think you can show up every day and hey i you know i got 10 sheets on the wall today that's just all i got well it better have been a really hard 10 sheets you know what i mean because sure. there's no reason for that mm -hmm. i i don't know how you can actually go that slow uh, you know right um and the company can't make any money at, at nope. that rate. No, nope. we'd never sell the job, mm -mm. and you wouldn't have a job. Exactly. And uh, that's the part that carpenters need to understand. That's where that you and the company, you and the union, mm -hmm. the unions teamed up with these companies. Yep. These companies are teamed up with the union. Any one of these companies, it doesn't matter who it is. Sure. They can just all of a sudden decide they don't want to be union. Exactly. They can do it. It's, it's pretty simple for them. It, it's not really that hard. It's really easy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've seen it over the years. They just, they just up and close. And then you, all of a sudden you got this huge onslaught of guys that are out there looking for work mm -hmm. because they want to work union. Yep. They don't want to work non-union. Exactly. You know, and that comes you, in my opinion, that comes from the guys working for that company get lazy and then the companies they're not hitting their margins they're not making their money mm -hmm. and the only thing they can do to keep the doors open is to go non-union or just go out of business or just go out of business yeah just close up shop exactly so it's it's very simple it is very simple it, it really yeah, is so really this, is. 
this is all um, good advice <laughs> that you're giving to uh, some of these new guys that are coming yeah. in the game. Yeah, you know they need to hear this. Do do they do they talk about that when they're training?